Oh, Tim Allen, you dumb, dumb fuck. And don't get me wrong, I'm not expecting next level brilliance from a guy who got famous by grunting, but I expect more than this. Now, there's a good chance you've already seen this, but let me fill you in if you haven't. A clip from an old interview with Tim Allen is going around thanks to a viral Tic Tac. And in this clip, Tim Allen presents possibly the stupidest argument for the existence of God that has ever or indeed could ever be presented. And keep in mind that we're talking about a world where look at the trees ranks amongst the most common retorts to atheism. So here's the relevant clip. I mean, not for nothing, but I believe that was his daughter's reaction to the argument, right? But both the stammering and the therapy, just not for the reason that Tim thinks. She's left speechless by his stupidity and his dumb ass has taken a victory lap around her. But yeah, according to Tim, the tool man, Taylor, the fact that you don't believe in something is proof that it exists. And as was pointed out by the TikToker who drew our attention to the clip in the first place, this is coming from a guy whose most famous role was Santa Claus. Now, this, this actually isn't the first time I've come across this clip. It, it comes from an interview on Norm MacDonald's podcast from like a year or two before he died. And a lot of people forget this because of the way that we kind of after somebody dies, we kind of glaze over their shitty parts. But Norm MacDonald's fucking sucked. He was a right wing misogynistic bigot who spent a lot of time pretending white comedians were in danger of censorship. And anyway, so leading into this part of the interview, you really get a taste of that. Right? The, the, the prompt for this conversation is basically Norm MacDonald going, so how about them fucking atheists, huh? What a bunch of fucks, am I right? And then, and then Tim Allen, no surprise, agrees. He actually starts off fumbling his way through the fine tuning argument like a fourth grader that had to memorize the Gettysburg Address. And then he offers up the nugget of wisdom you just heard. In order for you to not believe in something, it must first exist. And I'm going to say, I'm impressed with how wrong this manages to be. Consider just how much you have to power down the critical thinking parts of your brain to even utter that sentence. I mean, Step one in checking on your argument is personal substitution, right? Would I find this convincing? Well, let me consider something that I don't believe in, that some people do believe in, and imagine somebody trying to convince me it's true. What would be the equivalent argument? How would I respond to it? Any attempt to do this whatsoever, right, even by the simplest of sapient minds, refutes it. One second of devoted critical thought, and you realize, oh, fuck, I just proved the existence of Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, and the Tooth Fairy, right? In fact, you kind of have to go out of your way not to realize how bad this argument is. But for his part, when it's posited, Norm MacDonald just sits there in awe of it. And then fucking dumbstruck and dumber struck sit there and pat themselves on the back for two fucking minutes about how pwned we non-believers just were. And yes, there are certainly more sophisticated arguments in favor of theism than this one. I don't know that there are any that rise all the way to the level of sophisticated, but certainly more sophisticated than, well, how would you even know what not to believe in if there wasn't a God? But, but to be honest, this is the kind of shit that you tend to get when you ask Christians why they believe in God. I mean, some of them memorize complicated apologetics because, you know, they've heard that it's the one simple trick to convert atheists. But, but when they're even remotely unguarded, they trot out shit like this. They toss out such patently absurd justifications that it's hard to believe they're even being serious. And when they do this shit, they accidentally admit the real reason they believe in God. They refuse to think about it. Any series of words that ends in therefore God exists is good enough when you've put a mental wall between yourself and doubt. It doesn't matter if the argument is convincing. Hell, it doesn't even matter if the argument is coherent. You're not allowed to think about it. And 99 times out of 100, neither are any of the God believers you offer it up to. I mean, I've spent a sizable portion of my life learning their top level apologetics and the refutations thereof. But when I encounter a Christian in the wild, I'm almost always confronted by something this asinine. Hell, I was recently challenged to explain where heaven comes from if there's no God. You know, now, that's not to say that there's no value in studying these more advanced arguments. Right? Thinking about what you believe has a benefit all of its own. And when you come across somebody who's genuinely questioning their faith, th those arguments come in really handy. But when it comes to people who just want to argue about God at like the family reunion or Thanksgiving dinner or the company mixer or whatever, you're far less likely to encounter the Kalam cosmological argument than you are something along the lines of, well, if there was no Jesus, then what were all them BC people even counting down to? And again, I need to emphasize this. That is an actual argument that I was presented with once. 
So yeah, enjoy the commentary. I'm always glad to see shit apologetics go viral, and this is a pretty easy one to dig into. But remember it, whenever you find yourself frustrated because you can't find the argument that your brother or your sister-in-law or your uncle or whatever finds convincing, remember that an awful lot of Christians do find this kind of shit convincing, and rest assured that it's probably not a problem with your arguments.